Have you ever thought about starting a savings account, getting a debit card, or helping your children open up their very first account? Perhaps you're interested in opening a checking account to pay bills online. If so, you probably know that to meet your goal, you'll have to work with a financial institution, such as a bank or a credit union. This workshop will provide you with an overview of the different types of banking services financial institutions provide, and it will help you begin to think about which services make sense for you. Okay, just a second. Okay, in today's webinar, some of the things that we will learn is we will learn how to identify financial institutions, how to compare different types of banking accounts, and to choose one that is right for you. Ways financial institutions protect and insure your money strategies to help protect your money when using online banking. So uh, what type of services do you need from a financial institution? That's a question you might want to ask yourself. What type of services do you need? You may have a variety of services you, can, you need from a financial institution, and that's OK. We will explore the best ways to meet your goals in this workshop. Where do you currently bank? There are many places where you can do your banking services. We will cover some of the different places you can do your banking services. If you're thinking there are banks, there are credit unions and there are other financial institutions. You're correct. The decision you make about how to save, how to convert checks into cash or conduct other financial activities may be driven by your current needs or your future goals. A question to consider as you think about meeting your goals is what do I need today? to do what I want to do to get me where I want to be. Financial institutions such as banks and credit unions are excellent resources when thinking about the best way to save or work with money. Let's start by learning about some types of financial institutions. Where can you go to cash checks? Where are some places people can go to get loans? If you're thinking banks, credit unions, check cashing services, payday loan companies, yes, those are all places where you can cash checks and get loans. There are many places people can go for their banking needs, ranging from check cashing services to payday lenders to banks and credit unions. Non-banking institutions are NBFI, including money service businesses, MSB, such as check cashing services, which are businesses that transmit or convert money. And if you notice, there are a lot of check cashing places around. It depends on what neighborhood or what location you're in, but there are tons of check cashing places. People who don't have an account at a financial institution may use money service businesses to cash checks. After cashing checks, people sometimes will take the money home, take the cash home and hide it. But this practice can be very risky because cash is very vulnerable to theft. Money service businesses charge extremely high fees per transaction. Banks are for profit. Financial institutions that are federally licensed to receive deposits and issue loans. Credit unions are not for profit. Financial institutions that are member owned and operated. 
and some of the advantages of banks and credit unions over money services, uh, money service businesses. Banks and credit unions provide many services that MSBs don't, such as offering checks and checking and savings accounts. Banks and credit unions might also be a less expensive alternative to MSBs, as they are as they may charge lower fees per transaction. Banks and credit unions should provide insurance on deposits. Banks and credit unions offer interest bearing accounts, so the money you deposit into their accounts has a chance of increasing slowly over time. Banks and credit unions sounds pretty similar, but they are not. There are, there are some differences. Banks and credit unions are similar in many ways, but they have a few key differences. Both banks and credit unions allow you to deposit and withdraw cash from checking and savings accounts. Both also offer a variety of other types of accounts. Both banks and credit unions accept cash, checks, and wire transfer deposits, provide loans, traveler's checks, foreign currency, and money orders offer many conveniences for customers, including 24-hour online banking, ATMs, uh, debit cards, credit cards, and many types of interest-bearing accounts, and offer insurance for deposit on certain types of accounts up to $250,000 per person. First, let's take a look at banks. Banks are for profit. That makes money from account. That makes money from account fees and interest from loans. May have more convenient locations in the area or across the nation. Are open to all. Anyone is eligible to apply for a an account. A credit unions are not for profit business. Share profits with their members may require membership in a community or a group to qualify, may offer better interest rates and lower account fees, are typically smaller in size than banks with fewer locations. So far, we have learned that financial institutions are alternatives to using MSBs, such as check cashing companies or keeping money at home. Financial institutions offer many services and benefits to customers. Everyone wants to protect their money. They've worked really hard for it. One of the primary advantages of financial institutions is that they offer insurance for your money. Financial institutions offer many ways to keep your cash safe including deposit insurance as other security features. How does this work? Let's take a look. Money deposit into accounts at banks and credit unions is insured up to $250,000 for each depositor. That means a joint account is insured up to $250,000 per co-owner. In the unlikely event that a bank or credit union fails, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is the FDIC, and the National Credit Union Administration, the NCUA, make sure you don't lose your money. Keeping your cash at home, even in a safe, does not provide this kind of insurance against any theft or natural calamities such as fire or floods. Not all financial institutions are federally insured and not all products are insured. Financial institutions are federally insured. So be sure to double check that the institution and the account you selected are federally insured. Insurance covers the most common types of accounts, such as checking accounts, savings account, money market accounts. It also covers cashier checks and money orders. 
Insurance does not cover all products that you may buy from a federally insured bank or credit union, especially those related to stocks, bonds, securities, life insurance products, contents of a safe deposit box at a bank or credit union are not covered under insurance from the FDIC or the NCUA. Insurance can keep your money safe, but it is the interest offered through certain types of accounts that can make your money grow. So how does your money grow? When your money is in a financial institution such as a bank or credit union, it may earn interest. But what is interest? Interest is one of the most important concepts to understand when evaluating and planning your financial transactions. Interest is a fee paid to borrow money. It is collected by a lender and paid by the borrower. When you deposit money into your bank or credit union, you are the lender and the bank is the borrower. That means the bank pays you the interest. However, when you take out a loan from a bank or credit union, the bank is the lender and you become the borrower. Who pays the interest? Interest is expressed as a percentage. When you deposit money into an interest bearing account, a financial institution pays you interest to keep your money. In this case, you are the lender. You are lending your money to a financial institution and the financial institution is now the borrower. The higher the interest rate, the longer you leave your money in the account, the more money you will earn. So how does interest help your money grow? It's a little, it's a simple, let's look at this simple graph. The bottom part of the graph represent the, the bottom part of the bars represent the money you deposit into your account over time. The top part of the bars represent the interest you earned on your deposit. As you can see, the amount of interest you earned is eventually greater than the amount of money you deposited. This concept is called compound interest. How compound interest works is, let's say you deposit $100 into your account that earned 1% interest each year. In the first year, you earned $1 in interest on that $100 deposit. In the second year, you earned $1.01 in interest on that $101 deposit. In the third year, you earn $1.02 in interest on the $102.01 and so on. So it adds up your earning interest on the money that's deposited. So because you're earning interest on both your initial deposit and the interest, your money will grow quicker over time. When you take out a loan and you carry a balance on your credit cards, you pay interest to the financial institution. Since interest is always growing, you will owe more than you originally borrowed. In this case, compound interest is working against you. We will explore a few types of bank accounts so you can become familiar with some of the available options. Different accounts can be helpful for different needs. Let's look at what each account type is to be suited for. Let's look at, let's look at all the different accounts to see which one is suited for you. A checking account always allows you to deposit and withdraw money for daily transactions. Checking accounts are designed for customers regular use. Typically, they offer no interest or low interest rates. A checking account comes with a debit card or ATM card. A debit card is similar to a check in that it withdraws money directly from your account when you make purchases. 
While a debit card is a convenient feature, it is easy to lose track of your balance if you don't record your spending on a regular basis or check your account. Now let's talk about savings account. A typical savings account allows you to deposit and withdraw money, but the financial institution may require you to maintain a minimum balance. Savings accounts are useful for putting money aside for wants, emergencies, and your rainy day fund. Because savings accounts have a higher interest rate, uh, a higher interest rate than checking accounts, it is definitely a good idea to create a savings account. A money market account, or a MMA, is a type of savings account that often offers a higher interest rate than a standard savings or checking account. You can write checks on a money market account, but there may be additional restrictions like needing to keep a high minimum balance. A certificate of deposit, a CD, is a type of savings account that generally pays a higher interest rate than a standard savings account because the financial institution holds your deposit for a fixed period of time such as three, six, or nine months. Is there a young person in your life developing wise financial habits at an early age can help encourage responsible decision-making and healthy relationships with money before adulthood. Most banks and credit unions allow minors, people under 18 years old to open accounts with a parent or guardian or an adult. Here are a few account options. There is joint ownership, account owned by the minor and their parent or guardian. Both the minor and the parent or guardian can make deposits and withdrawals. Sometimes the minor must receive authorization from their parents or guardian to make withdrawals. Parents or guardians may open an account in the minor's name. This is a custodial account and on custodial accounts, the parents or guardian can open an account in the minor's name. Only the parents or guardian may withdraw money from the account. All transactions must be made for the on the minor's benefit for the minor's benefit. So you can't just go get it to go do something you want to do. It has to be for the benefit of the minor. Selecting an account type is an important task. Think about the following question when deciding upon an account type. Who is the account for? What will the account be used for? Is it everyday transactions or is it long-term savings? So you will want to ask yourself that question. If it's a savings account, do you want it to do you want to have access to it at any time or would you prefer to let it grow or let it go untouched for a fixed period of time? Do you have enough money for a basic account? Uh, do you have enough money for a money market account? Are you looking for a CD or do you just want to do a shared certificate? Now that we have covered types of financial institution, interest, insurance, and types of account, let's apply our learning to some scenarios. Okay, in this scenario, Ellie has been saving for his daughter's college fund. He has about $20,000 saved and has a good and has a goal of forty thousand dollars over time. Now, if you want to follow along, you can go to your participants guide on page three, Alice Decision Part One. Okay, Ellie has about twenty thousand dollars that he has been saving for his daughter's college fund. He was keeping the money at home. But recently, someone told him about a safety deposit box at a financial institution. He was excited to learn that financial institutions keep your valuables in a vault. 
So he moved some of his important papers and his tuition savings into a safety deposit box at a nearby financial institution. Can you imagine keeping $20,000 at home in today's time? I cannot, but it happens. What options will work for Ali so that his money is protected? Because remember, we don't want to lose any of our money, especially our initial principal. If you're thinking a savings account, a CD, money market account, or a checking account, these are all correct. You could use any one of these products to keep his money safe. With the CD or a money market account, he has an opportunity to earn some interest. And maybe a checking account if it's an interest bearing account and as well as the savings account. So all of those would be a good option. So in this scenario, Ellie is the lender because he's bringing money to the bank or credit union and the bank is the borrower. It is Ellie's money that he is lending to the bank uh, through his deposit and his return. And in his return, the bank will pay him interest on his deposit. We've examined how earning interest can help. Let's see what happens if we owe interest. And if you want to follow along again in your participants guide, go to page four on the Ali's decision part two. Although $20,000 is a great start, Ali will need much more than that for his daughter's education. He is still $20,000 short of his goal for his daughter's college fund. Ali is considering taking out a loan for the remaining $20,000. His bank has offered him two options at 5% interest for five years or a loan for 5% interest for two years. Loan terms, in this example, the main difference between the two options is the loan terms because option A is for a longer length of time, five years, the total amount of interest is higher, which option ultimately costs the borrower more money. At least less money in interest if he goes with option B. B would ultimately cost him less money in interest since the loan is for a shorter period of time. As you can see, interest can work in Ali's favor when he's earning interest on his savings or interest can work against him when he's paying interest. There are other factors that could potentially make this process more complicated, such as compound interest, where interest is charged or earned on the principal and the interest itself over years or months. Earning interest can be a simple way to grow your money. Whether your goal is to save, invest, or borrow money, Pay attention to the interest rates offered, various financial institutions, products, and services. So far, you have learned about the benefits of banks and credit unions, um, insurance, and interest. The next step is to visit your chosen financial institution and apply for a checking or savings or money market account. So let's talk about some steps to getting an account open. Once you've narrowed down what is important to you, you'll need to gather some documents to open an account. There are five steps to open an account. And let's start with number one. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is visit your bank or credit union in person or online. The next step is you're going to bring two forms of identification which could be a driver's license, passport, birth certificate, social security card, or another form of government issued ID. The third step is you're gonna provide personal details such as your address, phone number, 
email address and please confirm that the information is accurate. Have cash or check or your debit card so that you can make your initial deposit. And step number five, you want to uh, for any joint accounts or any type of accounts for a minor, provide personal information for that minor or the joint person. OK, so let's talk about using checking accounts. Now we talked about opening them. Now let's look at how to use them. People use checking accounts to pay bills, purchase items and make deposits. Savings accounts and money market accounts tend to have minimum balances, balance requirements and are often used to earn interest. So they aren't billed to operate like a checking account. You deposit money into these accounts to save up for a long term goal or a rainy day fund or uh, something, usually something in general. Many people set up direct deposit with their employers so that their paycheck can automatically be deposited into their account. And uh, moving on, if you want to continue to follow along, please go to page five in your participants guide on how to open a checking or a savings account. Use the checklist to help you prepare to open any account with a financial institution. Once you open an account and deposit money, you'll likely have the option of online banking and online banking has risk and rewards. Anytime you access your account at a financial institution using the Internet, whether it is through a computer, laptop, tablet or your phone, you're using online banking. Most financial institutions have an online component or a mobile app to make banking services available without the need to visit a branch or ATM. You can use many of the regular services online, including viewing balances, making deposits and transferring money between accounts. Here are a few strategies to consider to keep your money safe. Use a strong password, have a mix of numbers, letters and symbols and keep it a secret. Please do not use your birthday. Uh, do not use your birth name or any personal identifiable, identifiable information. If you use a banking app on your mobile device, use a different password for your banking apps. And be sure to keep your phone locked and password protected. Use a secure internet connection. Websites uh, using SSL, secure sockets, layer encryption, always show a web address with S at the end, like HTTP. So make sure you look for HTTPS. So make sure if you're going to be doing a financial transaction to use HTTPS to ensure that you are on a secure site. Never provide personal information to someone via email or phone. Log out of all financial institutions website after accessing your account on a public computer. Online banking can be convenient and easy. However, safety is an important part of keeping your money secure. There are many steps you can take to help keep your money secure. Let's explore a few scenarios and see if we can help some of the people out. OK, if you'll turn to page six in your uh, participants guide and there's uh, there are some scenarios that you can read. There's George, Amara, there's Ming and then there's Sam. So if you could just go over those real quickly and then we'll talk about them. OK, let's look at George. What could we do to uh, to keep George information safe online? 
Uh, using the same password can make it easy for hackers to gain access to all of your personal accounts at once. So once, a, if you're using the same password, once a hacker gets into one account, they can use that same information to get in all of your accounts. Now, one of the things George could do is develop a system to keep track of his passwords. So he doesn't use the same one for every account. The solution could be a notebook or piece of paper that he keeps in a safe or in a secure place. George could also use a password manager to keep track of his passwords. I know it's a lot of passwords and it's hard to remember, but you have to come up with some kind of system because keeping your account safe is part of your responsibility. What could Amara do to be safe online? Using personally identifiable information can make it easy for hackers to guess her password. Amara could increase her account security measures by using fake but memorable information such as uh, the name from her favorite book or um, her favorite movie. She doesn't necessarily have to use ident personally identifiable information that, that's pertaining to her life. What could Ming do to keep uh, his information safe? Uh, using an unsecured network can allow hackers to access and steal sensitive information. Ming is most likely using an unsecured network when uh, he is checking his balance on his mobile device using public Wi-Fi. To protect your account, it is best to use an SSL, secure website, or Wi-Fi network that requires a password. What could Sam do? Now, we're at Sam. So what could Sam do to be safe online? Be extra careful in protecting your data when using a public computer. Sam is taking advantage of online banking by using the library's computer. However, he needs to be extra vigilant to make sure he logs off from any accounts. And he should not use any autofill features. Online safety is important part of keeping your money secure. Just as many financial institutions offer insurance to protect your money, you also pay a role, you also play a role in ensuring your money, your own privacy and security. Okay, banking basics provide you with a solid foundation for learning new terms, tools, knowledge, ha and habits for building a healthy financial future. Today, you learned how to identify different financial institutions, how to compare different types of bank accounts, and choose the one that is right for you. Ways financial institutions protect you and ensure your money, strategies to help protect your money when using online banking. As with any plan, project, or lifestyle change, you will need time, energy, effort, and patience. Sometimes it is hard to get started. Discouraging to come face to face with your financial realities are difficult to stay motivated. Just know that you are not alone. We all struggle with coming face to face with our financial goals at some point in time. Being informed is a key to your success. The more knowledge you build, the sounder choices you will be able to make to improve your financial situation. We have enclosed some additional resources in your participants guide. On page seven, there is a glossary of common terms. Please make yourself familiar with those. And taking this workshop and learning accurate information about financial institutions, interests, Insurance, accounts, and safety and security are big steps toward improving your financial path. 
Now that concludes our webinar for today. Thank each and every one of you for joining us. Now it's time for our drawing. One lucky 